All right, I know everybody wants to go home, so we'll try to make it uh, as fast and as entertaining as possible. So Hyperloop, we're building it. So who actually knows what a Hyperloop is? OK. Well, for the ones that don't, we have a little video. And I'm sure even the ones that do learn a little bit, so. America's always been a nation of doers. We build things. We take risks. And we believe that if you have a good idea and are willing to work hard enough, you can turn that idea into a successful business. Billionaire philanthropist Elon Musk has hinted at a new high-speed transport system that could put planes and trains out of business. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. So what's Hyperloop? Mr. Musk's plan? Move people using a massive vacuum tube combined with a magnetic levitation system. Kind of like a Jetsons tunnel? It's something like that, yeah. Here's how he teased the idea in May at an All Things D conference. It's a cross between a Concorde and a railgun. It's called the Hyperloop. It's a system of giant suspended tubes. Riding within are capsules carrying people or freight traveling on cushions of air at speeds of up to 1200 k's per hour or roughly one kilometer every three seconds. A tube that would be on pillars from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and inside there would be capsule cars that would be rocketed forward up to 700 miles an hour, and that there would be a fan on the front. Elon Musk basically says that this is the way of the future. How would you like something that uh, can never crash? Um, it is immune to weather. It goes uh, three or four times faster than the, the, the sort of bullet train. And it would cost you uh, much less um, than, than an air ticket. It will only cost to build this six or seven billion dollars. Oh. Compare that to the 65 billion for the current high speed rail plans for California. He believes this is a viable, valuable alternative for mass transit between these two destinations. Could something like the Hyperloop actually be the answer to super fast, environmentally friendly, high speed travel between our busiest cities? So the gauntlet has been thrown down. A design document for a whole new super cool way to travel. The only thing now, will someone pick it up and make the Hyperloop a reality? There are some companies that, have, that are forming to try to make the Hyperloop happen and uh, I, encourage them. I think that's that's great. Tesla founder Elon Musk proposed this new technology called Hyperloop and it's being developed right now in Playa Vista here in this hangar behind me. The only resistance would be the air in front of the capsule which uh, we move to the back by using a compressor. The company Hyperloop has teamed up with the students to create this tube technology that's designed to connect cities up to 400 miles apart. Dirk Alborn says it's safer and more efficient than the railroad. Well, the system is complete, completely computerized. So um, you, know, you optimize the system, and then you actually have the humans to monitor it. In railroads, most accidents were all human factors. Plus, a lot of the derailments are actually happened because something's on the track. So we are in a closed system. We're completely managed by a computer system. There's no human factor that can actually create those issues. We actually plan on uh, seeing the first Hyperloop very, very soon starting. Can you imagine uh, and walk us through what it might be like to travel at the speed of sound? It's not going to be much different than uh, sitting in an airplane, actually. Obviously, for us, it's very important to make it as good of an experience as possible. So This is an independent organization that has formed. We have 170 engineers, scientists, and uh, really great professionals with amazing backgrounds. The race is on. Elon Musk's vision for a high-speed passenger pods known as the Hyperloop is one step closer to becoming reality this morning. One of the known companies competing to capitalize on Musk's proposal announcing today it has struck a deal with landowners in Central California to build the first full-scale Hyperloop along a five-mile stretch along I-5 with construction set to begin in 2016. Let's bring in Dirk Alburn, who is the man who runs the Hyperloop Transportation Technologies team, which is announcing this deal with Quay Valley, California. Uh, Dirk, tell me about this deal and, and really when you expect this Hyperloop, this five-mile stretch to be finished. Quay Valley is supposed to be breaking ground um, beginning of 2016. That's um, when we will be start um, working on our development. So we will be starting ground uh, at the same time. Uh, we, at this moment, we expect to be done by 2018. Hyperloop now appears one step closer to reality. 
Starting next year, that theory will turn into a groundbreaking in Quay Valley, Kings County off of I-5. A developer there has just committed a big chunk of his private land toward the project. It's a five-mile loop that would take visitors through a planned entertainment district. There's going to be a test track. Elon Musk has announced that he's going to build a small-scale test track. It's a necessary step for us to be building a full-scale version, and um, Quay Valley is a sustainable model town of the 21th century, so it's a perfect fit. They're expecting over 10 million uh, visitors per year, so we will actually be able to re uh, generate revenues very, very fast. The company plans to go public later this year. We want to do a public offering. We want to give the, uh, our community that's supporting us the possibility to own parts of, uh, of the company. We want to make sure that um, the people that have been helping building um, the company and this technology are able to um, participate in, in, in the investment in the fundraising and the upside of the company. With their contributions to Hyperloop, these students from around the world now have stock options in the company, but they say they're not in it for the money. As a student, I start to feel like um, I'm in, uh, in part of uh, some great career that might change the world. Will the Hyperloop kill the railroad? The Hyperloop is going to do to the U.S. what the railroads did in the 1800s. So um, it will change the way we live. It's possible today, it's based on existing technologies and it's the right time, it's the right moment to finally get something doing like this. Is it visionary? In 30 years time, <laughs> will you and I be sitting on our rocking chairs going, well, we talked about it then and he did it. Do so you think this is possible? This is not just... Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. For all those who said this is just a neat little thing <laughs> to draw on a cocktail napkin, these guys are saying it will become reality. All right, so. Thank you. So just really quick, again, what's a Hyperloop? Imagine a capsule full of people, okay, inside a tube that moves um, people from point A to point B, but just really, really fast. We do this by, um, inside the tube, we create a low pressure environment, so, very similar to an airplane that gets on high altitudes. The capsule encounters very low resistance and therefore can go up to 1,200 kilometers an hour okay, with very little energy. A really important part is actually that it's um, completely self-powered. So the system uses solar energy, wind energy, kinetic energy. We're actually generating more energy that we're using and therefore have the reselling of the energy as a revenue stream. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm sure you guys all know these companies. They all have something in common. They're all kind of a failure, right? They're either not existing or very close to it. Well, and then there are these companies. All these companies, actually, did a change. They, some of them were on um, the edge of destruction, but um, did something really important. They started using crowdsourcing. Okay, so normally when we talk about these kind of projects when it's a new train a new infrastructure a new highway a new metro system you you know you hear about it you you might actually hear it's going to cost billions of dollars of your tax money but that's it then one day it's it's built and um, nobody really asks you right so in our case we do jumps uh, we're using jumpstart funds Jumpstart Fund is a crowdsourcing platform. It's actually how this project um, was born. And we're doing what we call crowdstorming. And crowdstorming, there's things like we allow people to join our team. We ask questions. We want to hear ideas. We want to have, hear your opinions. And those are things like, um, do we need a ticket? Right? And not only do we need a paper ticket, but I think personally the ticket is very much 1800, right? 2015, there must be a better way to monetize. And if we can find a way that we can make more money 
the more people write, then a ticket doesn't really make sense. Then we use the price of the ticket to regulate demand. So it's free, off peak time, and we only we, 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 we really only optimize the whole system. And that's when, in my opinion, we start changing the world. So this is an example of um, a map that we used in the crowd in one of the CrowdStorm documents. So this is an American map. Um, now, not all those routes are perfect. We actually put them in there in order to get feedback, right? So this document was published, sent out to the press, and um, as an example, I don't know how many of you know where Albuquerque is, but um, we were three times on TV in Albuquerque because Albuquerque was on this map. <laughs> and people started discussing, what, Hyperloop, Albuquerque, Phoenix? And that's exactly what we wanted. We, wanted, we had some assumptions, and we wanted to hear if the people that are actually living there What's their opinion? So we follow all the discussions. Every time someone, every, every time a naysayer makes a comment, we actually, we, we look them up. We, we follow those and take them very serious. Those people are actually helping us together with our community. But what it also shows is what the Hyperloop really is. It's a metro system, right? An U-Bahn, so a subway system that's connecting metropolitan areas. Most of these are some, like, our, our sweet spot is around 40 minutes. So you can be from a, in a late, from LA to San Francisco within 36 minutes. I think this is really amazing. This is how we can, you know, how are we going to live? It's, it's a big question. And um, you can imagine, I don't know, Berlin, Amsterdam, as an example. I think it would be awesome, right? What would you do tonight? if you could be in Amsterdam within half an hour. So we actually want to hear from you guys. Right? We want to hear where would you, what, what are the city pairs you guys think are great connections? Because sometimes there are even things that we, you know, we, we don't think about, but our community can. But um, only getting you within 36 minutes from LA to San Francisco is not, is not enough. We really have to think about the whole, whole experience. So it has to be as easy as pushing a button, a self-driving car, and a taxi, an Uber, a ride-sharing service comes, picks you up, brings you to um, a local Hyperloop station, which then brings you to the main station. And now you're in San Francisco from LA within 50 minutes from anywhere in LA. That's really when we change. But if it takes you an hour and a half to get to the station, you're very likely not going to use it much often. But we really want to build something that you use every single day. So let me ask you a question here. Who thinks traveling sucks? Really? So I assume all the others don't travel. <laughs> I mean, every time I take an airplane, it's, the experience is terrible, right? Uh, every time I go, most of the time when you take a train, it's, I mean, in our case, our community thinks so as well. So we have more than 10,000 people in the community that want to make those things better, right? We're all over the world. We have by now more than 400 professionals that are working on this project. And as you heard in the video, everybody in the company is paid with stock options, okay? So all these people are super passionate they want to change the world. They want to change how we travel. And you know, this, these are not some kids in a chat room. We're talking about the professor of psychology from Stanford University. We have people that worked on the Mars rover. We have um, people that worked on the Manhattan Project. And of course, we have students that are in university, out of university. Um, we even have big companies, industry partners by now, that are joining us as a company and are working in exchange for stock options in order to make this project reality. So this open approach, it's working. So when we, you know, when, when the team wants to join, when, when someone does an application, um, we require a minimum of 10 hours a week. Because we have found out that uh, everything less 
you know, it's impossible to work in a team. Most, I mean, many actually do work much more, but um, so the value that has been created is over $11 million just in, in hours if we would have paid them. We get at, the, at this moment five new applications every single day. We go back, we send them the contracts, talk to them, see if they're, if they're fit, um, and get them onboarded. So the team is growing. Th through this whole process, we haven't raised any money. So everything you guys have seen, the land, the development, not one penny that came from an outside investor. We are self-funded in terms of we have another company, or a Jumpstarter with Jumpstart Fund, where we pay for the expenses. But um, the company so far hasn't raised anything, which I think is amazing, because you can go very, very far without necessarily needing all the money. And that's really a message to you guys, because I hear it a lot of times, well, in Berlin, we can't really, you know, we don't have access to the capital you guys have in the States. It's not necessary. But we had more than 470 investors that uh, have contacted us and wanted to give us money. So we actually said no. And in the early days, they, they contacted me and I said, look, um, we don't even know if it's doable, right? We finished our feasibility study last year in December. So until then, I had no idea how much money do we need. Is this possible? I would have raised funds only for myself in order to give myself a salary, but later? Now, we, now things are changing, obviously, so now we know we can do it, now we know how we are going to do it, where we are going to do it, so now things are completely changing. When the team, that, when, when team members apply, we ask them, what can you bring? We want to hear from them, what are your ideas? But we also ask them, can you bring any money? So, not only do those people work with us in exchange for stock options, but they're willing to bring over $7 million. We have never asked them to put the money in, by the way, but we ask it during the application process. Some put nothing. Many actually say that they can put from 500, 5,000 to 50, 100. We even had someone who said he bring a million. So, The same happened with the land. We're now building by 2000, 2016 is when we start building in Quay Valley. Quay Valley came out of the community with several opportunities for land. Only the land value is more than $12 million. So now for us for the next steps, obviously, as I said earlier, we're going to start building in Quay Valley. Quay Valley is between LA and San Francisco, and for those that are familiar with the project, the reason why we choose it is because it's right next to the I-5, which was the initial concept. It was between LA and San Francisco along the I-5. So now we are building in Quay Valley eight kilometers of a first track. It's, going, it's not a test track. It's a fully operational um, track. We're going to move more than 10 million people a year. So it's full scale. Quay Valley in itself is an amazing project. It's a, it's a newly to be built town. It's, uh, it's green, 100% solar powered, it's very walkable, has a university, but there's also a large entertainment district. So we're going to have three resorts. Uh, there's uh, an entertainment park, a shopping center, which explains obviously that we can actually move all these people. and. Um, obviously learn and optimize our systems with these people. It's a necessary step before we start building the next. By now, I think we have more than 20 city pairs that have approached us and said, hey, we want to have a Hyperloop here, but obviously you need to do something like Quay Valley first before you build 400 miles. So the next steps for us are that we obviously give the give our team members opportunity to, um, to participate in the fundraising. We're going to start the fundraising with our strategic partners. Um, we then need to do a public offering. In America, unfortunately, um, if you are not a millionaire, so if you don't own more than a million dollars or you don't, don't make more than 200,000, you can't invest into startup companies. 
Unfortunately, the laws about crowdfunding are not defined. There's just now a little bit of an update, but still, in order to let everybody participate, so all the people that are actually making this happen, we need to do a public offering. So that's, that will happen next year as well. Then we start building. We're going to have a test track and some comp open source competitions. We're going to do the optimization. In 2018, you're all invited to come try it out. So here you see a little bit of, uh, this is an architectural rendering of a station design. So you can see the, the capsules departing. We plan on having a capsule every 30 seconds. So you have different loading bays. We're really trying to completely revolutionize transportation. It's not only about going really, really fast inside a tube. It's way more. You have to look into infrastructure. We have, uh, we have teams that are working on the pylon design, construction. We, um, you know, we have to really think about the whole process. So what we want is your help. That's really the reason why we're going around in Europe. We want to find smart people like you. I mean, I'm actually, I'm, I'm born in Berlin. And I left almost 20 years ago. But I know that the people that are in the city are probably the most creative ones you can find anywhere else. So I think you guys can come up with some really cool solutions. Yeah, and that's basically it. So you can follow us on Twitter. You can join our community, apply the team. We're trying to build local teams in each country, mostly for, to create social awareness and business development, obviously. And um, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Just down here. Um, hi, thank you. Just one small technical question. What would happen if while an upper loop is working, if there is a break on the pressurization of the tube? Then the capsule will return to the station, slower obviously, but it's, uh, it's capable of operating in normal pressure as well. But on high speed, it will not create kind of a pressurized wall? Well, so you use the Cantorbit's limits um, uh, in emergency braking, for example. So obviously, if you have a rapid pressure loss, the capsule will, um, will slow down dramatically, yes, of course. But it's not a wall in itself. So if a tube completely disappears because of an explo explosion, then there's different safety mechanisms that are, that are in nesting, so. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, what is your background and how did you get involved in the project? And another question, um, I'm not sure about the speeds, but won't there be G-forces involved, traveling at that speed? Yeah, so, to the G-forces first, um, acceleration 1G, deceleration 1G, lateral 0 0.5. So it's done in a way that you don't feel it that much. Um, in terms of uh, how I got involved, I founded the company. Which <laughs> <laughs> but um, OK, so before I was, so I, wasn't, I was always an entrepreneur since I'm 19, 20. I had a couple of companies uh, when I was in Italy. I moved to the US, started working with um, a nonprofit incubator that was funded by NASA. And um, the nonprofit model wasn't really working, so uh, I really liked the idea of helping entrepreneurs. I see myself as a parallel entrepreneur, so having, you know, hearing a lot of ideas, I actually like it. And um, yeah, so we wanted to build something that's um, a model that works. So, and if you look at crowdfunding and what's happening with crowdfunding, right, uh, it's amazing. Crowdfunding can solve a lot of early stage issues when once you have a product, once you have an idea that's a little bit ripped out, if you have a community, they can actually fund you. So your the VC becomes less and less important. But I don't think that money is the most important thing. So a lot of times when I talk to entrepreneurs and they tell me, I need to raise $50,000 or $100,000, I ask them, what, what for? 
and they tell me, well, I need to hire a couple of developers. Well, in real, you need developers. You don't need money. So rather than pitching an investor, you should pitch developers and try to get them on board. And um, yeah, so Jumpstart Fund was uh, our concept. It's a crowd-powered incubator. It's still a concept. We're learning. We're, this is one of the projects where we, you know, we learn every single day what works and what doesn't. But it's amazing. It does work. So um, if you have something, if you work on something, and you're passionate about it, and you set your goal high enough, you will find people that say, wow, that's amazing. And you can tell them, look, help me. Work with me. Right? And they will share your passion. So. OK, we're going to do two quick more questions over here. Hi. Um, you say that uh, you care about uh, enhancing the experience uh, of uh, traveling. And you show also a map of um, uh, the, the cities in America. And I would like to know if you want to go from West Coast to East Coast, um, how, does, uh, how, how does it work uh, for the intersection when you pass through a city? Do you have to change to go to change the capsule, or you stay in the same capsule? Yeah, so at this time, we're looking at uh, travel times of 40 minutes. So it's like a metro system, but uh, you, know, it, you, you arrive in the city, you would switch. You know, you, that's, uh, right now, we're connecting two metropolitan hubs. That's, it's, not, it's not said that in the, in the future that might change. But uh, right now, the system is, uh, the concept is built. You will stop and then basically change and go to the next one. So the idea is that you can get from the East Coast to the West Coast, but you would have to change. Our, it's not really our goal to do long distance. On long distance, at the end, air travel might always make more sense. What kind of expertise do you want to get from Berlin, Germany, Europe that can help you accelerate the plan. What kind of European expertise do you think you need and that you can get from innovators that are here or in Europe? Well, great question. The, um, I think our first, our main target right now is to create awareness, to get people that are great in social media, so great in press, um, that know the local situation, because we don't. We are, we are in the US. We don't know what the local problems are. Um, if I go to the UK, for example, they have uh, HS2, which is a $52 billion project in the first uh, couple of miles. Um, I don't know the details. I don't know what it means. So we want a local business development uh, in each country. Um, but obviously, I mean, no. I'm biased because I'm German, and I think that in Germany we have great minds. We actually have uh, a great work ethic, great engineers, great technical minds that, that work on the details. So those are for sure as well the, I mean, the, the people that we really would like to see. And we are seeing. We actually have several uh, team members and larger companies that are part of our team from Germany. Um, yeah. But in general, we really, you know, everybody, everybody here in the group, you know for yourself what you could do and where you really could make a difference because you're really, really good in this one thing. And that's, you know, in, in an ideal case, those are the people that we want that have an idea what's the part that they want to change. All right. Mic is off. Now it's on. Thanks so much, Derek. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thanks.